Uh oh. Little blowout on the bottom. Probably should have checked that before I started. Now we got a real mess on our hands. Welcome to Everything Elliot, where I give everything a try. And while you're here, don't forget to check out some of my other videos. Today, we're gonna go over how to take the wheel bearings out of uh, a trailer. This happens to be a dumb trailer, but uh, it's gonna be the same for most trailers. And uh, what you're gonna wanna do to test if your wheel bearings are bad is just uh, give your tires a good shake. So if you grab the top and bottom, I don't know if you can hear that or not. So that's play in the bearing. That's not good. So first thing you're gonna do is take the tires off. Don't forget to put your uh, trailer up on jacks before. Probably should have mentioned that. This tire sounds like Either it's a really bad bearing, or this also needs brakes. Because let's see the front one. A little bit. Probably brakes. Oh, that's brakes. Something's not right in there. Guess we'll find out when we take this hub off. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is take this dust cap off right here. Just a dead blow hammer. Nice and greasy. Now these bearings are nice. It's got a zerk fitting right on it. Put that right there. A little rust proofing. Now this has got a uh, a lock washer on it. Let's see how this works. You just need to get a flathead and bend these out. This should come out. There's a couple different styles, either this style where you got to bend these little tabs out or there's a style where uh, it's just a cotter pin. Cotter pin going straight through the castle nut. <clears throat> there you go. That's all it is right there. Just bend these little locking tabs out a little bit. And you've got this nut here. Take this off. This is the axle nut. Axle nut. And then you get your first bearing. Oh, washer first. Washer. Then your first bearing. See if we can get this out of here. We'll just take the whole thing off and it'll come out a lot easier. Okay. So there's uh, the outside bearing. And this does have quite a bit of play in it. I don't know if you could see me moving it back and forth. See all that play in there? That's no good. And these fell out of the uh, fell out of the pad here, out of the uh, drum drum rotor. I don't know what they are yet. 
I haven't looked into it. And then you, inside your rotor here is your second pairing, which is behind this seal. Oh, my hands are super greasy. So this is a seal right here, and then your bearing is right below it. So we gotta get the seal out first. Grab yourself your slide hammer. Let's see if we can fit this in here. Oh yeah, there you go. Pop it a couple times here and there. There she is. The seal is out. And everything's nice and greasy. That's your seal. This is no good anymore. Get some of that rust proofing out of there and put it here on the tree. Oh yeah, nice. Keep everything nice and rust free. There we go. All right, so once the seal is out, you'll be able to remove your inner bearing. This has also got I know it's tough to see. Let's see if I can wipe it off at all. Got a lot of play in it. That bearing is not supposed to have all that play in there. So that's no good. Plenty of grease in here, which is a good thing. So once your bearing's out, you go to your local bearing dealer and uh, take these in and they'll get you match replacements. <coughs> First bearing. Now you might just have to wiggle that off. That one came off loose because of those broken parts, I'm assuming. So this one's gonna have to wiggle off. Gotta get the seal and inner bearing out of this one as well. The last one went just so well. Of course, this one's gonna fight me. There we go. The seal's out. Inner bearing. This one's got a bunch of play in it as well. Don't want that. There's a spring. Spring under here and no spring under there. Get you up close and personal here. So right here, 
I know it's gonna be kind of tough to see, but right there is that spring with the adjuster knob on it. And this one is missing. So that's gonna be, uh, those are gonna be our missing parts. So not only are we gonna have to get some bearings, we'll have to get the adjuster screw and the stuff like that. So what I'll have to do is I'm gonna go run to the bearing store probably tomorrow, now that I know what size bearings I need. And um, I'm gonna end up getting the brake parts too. I'm gonna do both sides, all four bearings, and the other brakes sound good, so I don't think there's any parts missing out of the other side. So we'll just get these, uh, the brakes for the rear and the bearings for all four. So we'll see you guys in a little bit. Next day, we got some new tools. Bearing packer, I didn't have one. I normally, ba um, normally pack my bearings by hand. We got the new adjuster for the brake that broke down here. And they didn't have that spring that belongs down here. This one that's all mangled up here. They didn't have that. But what they did have in their scrap pile was an old brake they said I could have. And it just so happens to have the spring right on it right there. So hopefully we'll be able to take that spring off. It should go from here to here. Put that on. Shouldn't be an issue. But uh, we're gonna do this one first because it's all we gotta do is the bearings, which I have new front and rear bearings right there. Oh, and uh, new seals. I've never used this bearing packer before, so we're gonna be learning together. Assemble bearing packer as shown. Threads all the way in. All right, that's threaded all the way in. So then let's just go on top then with the bearing in between, I guess. I guess we'll find out. Now does the bearing go on like this? That doesn't make sense. How would the grease get in there? I feel like it's just gonna make a mess. <clears throat> like it's gonna put a ton of grease in here, fill this whole area up. How does it work? <clears throat> so you put the grease in up top here and it comes out this little hole there. I think. But the problem is if you put the bearing in like this, it's going to fill up this whole area first, which is a lot of wasted grease. I think. I guess we'll try it and see what happens. Nothing yet. We'll set it on here, maybe. Get a good look at it. Maybe you can see that. All right, nothing's happening so far, and I'm out of grease. All right, grease is back filled up. The old lock and lube. Put it on there. Just primed up. Oh god. There we go. All right, now we're starting to get some pressure. Oh, there we go. Now it's starting to come out. See that? Starting to come out the bottom of the bearing. That's good, that's packed. Take the grease gun off. So that should be good and packed now. Hopefully we can get this off. 
Yep, there we go. Set that down there. So obviously, as expected, a ton of that grease is on the inside of the bearing. Just take that. Mirror it on the outside. I like my bearings nice and greasy. Take it, drop it in where it belongs, right there. Clean up. This is where the seal is going to be going. Take your new seal out. I'm just going to tap that in. Once you got that seal tapped in, get this back on here. And remember, it's going to be somewhat of a tight fit. There it goes, all the way in. So next, you'll take your front bearing. And you're going to pack this with grease as well. Bearing's in there. This one's quite a bit smaller, so hopefully it goes uh, a little quicker. Uh-oh, little blowout on the bottom. Probably should have checked that before I started. Now we got a real mess on our hands. So, <clears throat> lesson of the day, make sure this is spun all the way down to the bottom before you start. You can see how this gets pretty messy pretty quick. I don't know what would be better, hand packing or doing it this way. But we're committed to this for right now so we'll try it take this excess grease again and just smear it on the outside now it's important when you're doing wheel bearings not to use just general purpose grease uh, general purpose grease is just it's not made for the high temps that wheel bearings go through and uh, certainly you don't have to make them this greasy but I figure I'm in here doing it. Might as well get them good and greasy. So you take this, slide this right on there. Might have to do a little wiggling. And there she goes. All right. Next you're gonna reassemble it. Don't forget about your washer. Washer goes on first which this one has a cutout in it, so you gotta line it up. Then you're not. This is gonna be a little better than hand tight. As good as you can get it there. And then your retaining clip. Again, on this style, the retaining clip has that cutout in it. That only slides on one way and pushes over the nut. You wanna listen for that nice solid click. And what else you can do while you're in here is just take your grease gun and pack this whole thing full of grease.
This nice lock and lube holds on to the grease fitting for you. So you can tug on it, nothing happens. We'll just pack some grease in there. Reinstall your dust cap. And that's how you do uh, trailer bearings. Not a hard job. Um, might seem a little daunting, but it really is simple. You just take your old bearings into the trailer store and they'll give you what you need. They'll just match them up. Like I said, it's super important that you use high temp grease. Uh, usually it's fully synthetic. You don't want to just use regular all-purpose tractor grease that you get from tractor supply and stuff like that. It's not made for the high temps that wheel bearings get to. It'll break it down super fast and uh, it'll get like liquidy. So I'm going to finish doing the rest. The other three, uh, I'll fix the brake on there. And I uh, hope you guys learned something today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And don't forget to check out some of my other videos while you're here. Thanks, and have a great day.